So, um, so now that you know the different types of requests and where they fit in, um, in terms of uh, in terms of SharePoint development, uh, let's take a look at some of the deployment options. So, I mentioned the automated solution deployment. Let's take a look at some of the other deployment uh, options uh, that are applicable to SharePoint solutions. So, there's three main deployment options. Right, the easiest one on the bottom is content. Right, you just log into the site and you make your customizations. Well, the problem with that is your site is hosted in multiple servers and and in, in load balanced server environment. Uh, you may need to uh, some some of the artifacts you may need to deploy to multiple servers. Um, and also, there is no uh, you know there is no traceability and, and version control. Um, there is also uh, an option. I'm kind of going backwards. Uh, now, the farm solution. The farm solution is, uh, you know, it's you can do a lot with the farm solution, but it has some of its uh, some of its drawbacks in terms of uh, in terms of who can do what. And then there is a new deployment option um, uh, called an app, a SharePoint app. It's a SharePoint uh, 2013 specific concept. So let's take a look at uh, some of those details. So an app. So an app is a new uh, SharePoint 2013 um, concept. Uh, that allows you to, you know, package your solution into um, a package called an app uh, or app and uh, deploy it to um, either the cloud-hosted environment or on-premises environment. So some of the highlights here is it provides the highest level of, of app isolation. So if you're in the cloud environment, if you're deploying it to a uh, particular site, it doesn't, it's, it's not allowed to touch other sites, um, so so it's isolated from other apps and other artifacts pretty pretty well. Um, it's uh, clean and simple to install, um, and we'll, we'll take a look at how clean and simple it is. Um, uh, it can only draw. It can only run uh, JavaScript, no .NET code. It doesn't doesn't allow you to run the .NET code in behind. And you might think that it's pretty limiting, and it is. But uh, SharePoint has pretty rich um, in 2013. It's pretty rich uh, client-server object model, so you can do a lot through JavaScript. You can actually execute backend code that you would need .NET for uh, using JavaScript. But at the end of the day, it's just a JavaScript. There's a lot of flexibility, but it's pretty it's pretty limiting um, because it's it's just JavaScript. It can run in SharePoint Online or other cloud-hosted environments without any uh, impact. Uh, can be sold in the marketplace. That's a big one. Uh, so SharePoint 2013 has a marketplace. If you didn't know about that, search your SharePoint 2013 marketplace, and you'll find lots of already existing apps. So that's so that's where you can sell your app as well if it's something that you think other users will will like. Um, the deployment can be automated, right? So you can basically package a lot of different functions into an app, and when the app is installed, everything gets provisioned, uh, and uh, you can also delegate a lot of uh, permissions um, around what app is allowed to do to a user. Uh, so when the user launches an app, they can actually pick. All right, I can, uh, you know, I'm okay giving it uh, uh, permissions to write to my to my site versus modify my list and et cetera, et cetera. So the app can request those permissions, and users can choose to grant uh, all of those permissions to an app or not. There is no pick and choose. It's either all or nothing but users can have that control. And obviously, because uh, app is a packaged solution, there is version assigned to it, and you can release manage, uh, manage releases and uh, do version control. So that's great. So that's an app. Uh, farm solution. Farm solution is actually has pretty, is longer history than app. Of course, app is only a 2013 um, uh, type of artifact. Uh, farm solution has a longer history. Uh, that's how we did customizations for many years in, in the past. Uh, with uh, SharePoint 2007, 2010. Uh, so a farm um, solution is actually a package containing uh, DLLs, uh, containing libraries, containing controls, and contr uh, containing uh, manifests that uh, provision a variety of different artifacts, uh, such as potentially master pages or page layouts, into actual SharePoint file system and into the SharePoint database, content database. Um, and also, uh, you know, obviously DLLs go into the file system as well to the global assembly cache. So a um, couple of highlights around Farm Solution. As a Farm Solution uh, runs the same process as SharePoint. Because of that, it has full server-side SharePoint API access, right? 
basically you run the farm solution, it deploys DLL, it, DLL runs on the server. Because of that, you cannot run in SharePoint Online. Well, obviously, because imagine your DLL runs on the shared infrastructure, it can access pretty much everything, right? So it can access other tenants. You know, you, you could secure it, but it becomes a management nightmare. Therefore, uh, a lot of uh, online or cloud uh, uh, systems don't allow for farm solution deployments. Uh, it cannot be sold on marketplace, and that's just a choice. It's not, you know, it's not something uh, that can be done. Of course, you can upload the farm solution to your own site and, and sell it to people, and a lot of companies do, and uh, very successful at it, uh, but not on SharePoint Marketplace. And mainly the reason why is because uh, because this uh, farm solutions are so uh, rich in terms of the access that they get is that if developer hasn't spent enough time into debugging, uh, of course, I'm not speaking about anyone but us here, <laughs> but if developer has lots of bugs in their app and, and causes performance issues and they haven't tested in the proper scenarios but just tested it in their development environment, can run into, uh, you know, the app can cause issues and Microsoft doesn't want to be, um, well, I assume Microsoft doesn't want to be responsible for handling those. So that's why the market, marketplace doesn't... Uh, it's not the place for farm solutions. Uh, obviously, deployment can be automated because it's a package that has um, manifest files that provision a variety of functionality to different places, so things can be automated. It requires farm administrator to uh, and server access to install the farm solution. So this solution is not some. It's not like an app where you can give it to an end user and say, "Hey, just install this app to the site collection." You actually need someone to log into the server, upload the uh, the package and install it, um, and obviously because it's a, it's a package, you have a version control and you can do a release management. And the last one is content uh, or configuration. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but uh, it's something that uh, is worth mentioning. Um, naturally, you can just uh, you know deploy content to the site um, and, and modify content to the site. That's also one of your uh, deployment options is not so. Uh, it's it's not the, mo the most common, but it's also it, it is an option that people sometimes choose. And usually those are around things like um, administration. So, for instance, I want to administer some settings on the on, on the central administration on the site. Um, so I want to log in as administrator and you know make let's say permission configurations or create new permission groups. Uh, those are all acceptable options. You can automate them as well, of course. There is a certain level of balance between automation, investment of time that you require to write automation script versus just going and modifying a couple of things here and there. As long as you document it, things should be all right. So some highlights here um, around content or configuration. So obviously you can do it anywhere, online or on-premises. requires manual configuration um, everywhere. <laughs> you cannot... Um, uh, you know, if, if you go manual, you go manual. Um, deployment, uh, it says here, cannot be automated, obviously, because you do it manually. Uh, you can script it, but that wouldn't be a, a config, you know, the content configuration anymore. But you can script it. We'll take a look at some of the automation scripts around that. And um, the permissions will depend on the, uh, on the user that's logged then, right? Like if I'm a farm administrator, I can access a certain level of features that regular users can't. And versus if you're a contributor inside, you can only access the contributor features. So that's the difference. And then it's manual version control, no release management. So if you're changing something, make sure you know how to change it back. And if you forget how to change it back, then that's it. Uh, no one will know. Uh, so keeping good documentation makes a lot of sense. So um, around, in terms of, I kind of mentioned already, but where things are applicable in terms of uh, uh, deployment options. So apps are uh, the really sweet spot is for them um, for Office 365 and, and cloud hosted um, uh, scenarios. Uh, farm solutions are really on premises SharePoint farms. Apps can also run in SharePoint farm, but uh, they're more they're more popular in online scenarios. And content again, uh, you know, Office 365 is something that you would uh, typically do Office 365 and, and cloud. That's where you would go with the manual configurations because the level of uh, the level of changes is pretty uh, the level of options to, to make changes is pretty small and um, and 
you know, it, it makes most sense to just do it manually.